Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology. Today we're going to be talking about our first video, hydrocarbons, in the unit on biomolecules. Now, you can probably guess what biomolecules means. Basically, we're going to be talking about molecules which relate back to biology. In the previous unit, we, talked, we had a chemistry review so that um, we understand different concepts throughout biology. Now we're going to be actually looking at chemistry, um, but also with a, like, a twist to it because it's going to be also related to biology. All right. So whenever we're talking about biology and um, the chemistry behind biology, we typically come across um, the element carbon. Carbon is the element of life um, because all organisms are made up, have so at least some carbon in it. Um, carbon is found in all living organisms. It's very essential to um, life. Without carbon, life would not be possible. And the reason for that is because carbon is a very unique element in the sense that it can bond to, in many unique fashions. Carbon can bond, um, it can also, it ha carbon has four valence electrons, right? So because it has four valence electrons, it can bond in many different ways. Carbon can single bond. Let's say carbon was single bonding to four different elements, like element X. I'm just going to call it element X. There's no element called X, but I'm just going to say element X. So carbon can single bond like this. Carbon can also double bond like this. Or carbon can single bond and double bond like this. These are the three ways carbon can, carbon can completely a carbon atom can completely single bond around all the other elements it surrounds it, well, itself with. Carbon can also double bond between um, two elements like this, and carbon can also have one um, double bond and then two single bonds. Okay, so carbon is very unique in the way that it can it can bond in many different ways. All sing, again, all single bonds, all double bonds, or one double bond and two single bonds. No other elements can do this very well. Carbon's very good at doing that. So since carbon can bond in many different ways to other elements, it's very good at, um, at being like the backbone. Carbon is the backbone of biomolecules, okay? No other element is very um, has four valence electrons and can bond so well. So that's why we see carbon in all um, living organisms. And typically, uh, you've probably heard of this before, but this is important to know. An organic compound is typically a compound that contains carbon. Okay. So that's everything. Make sure you know all of these things. Now, hydrocarbons, which are which is what this video is on, is hydrocarbons are any molecules that contain both hydrogen and carbon. If if a molecule is made up of just carbon and hydrogen, it is considered a hydrocarbon. For example, if we had a molecule like this. Uh, if you had a molecule like this, this could be considered a hydrocarbon because it's made up of just carbon and hydrogen. So any molecule that's made up of just carbon and hyd hydrogen is a hydrocarbon, okay? And the reason why we're going to be talking about hydrocarbons is that they can con be considered the backbone for more complex compounds. Um, let me give you a brief example of what I mean by that. So let's say we have this basic hydrocarbon right here. Actually, why am I drawing it anymore? Let me just use this. So this is a very basic hydrocarbon right here. Now, this is the backbone. We can start altering this hydrocarbon. Instead of having a hydrogen here, we can replace it with a chlorine atom, let's just say. We have a chlorine atom right here. And then instead of having a hydrogen atom right here, we could replace it with, let's say, a um a fluorine atom okay so hydrocarbons are basically the basic the the backbone then we can start replacing the hydrogens with other um with other atoms so whenever we start you can think of you can like imagine like there's so many different combinations of what what we can do but the hydrocarbon is basically like the backbone, and then whenever we start changing what the hydrogens are, that's when we start to get more complex and complex um, molecules. So, hydrocarbons can vary in four different ways. 
Um, again, uh, when I'm saying backbone, we typically re refer to it as a carbon skeleton. So you can think of just like how our the human body has like the skeleton and then everything that builds on top of it, the skin, the um, the tissue. In the same sense, when you're looking at biomolecules, carbon is basically is kind of like the the skeleton of all other molecules. Okay, and as we keep going through this unit, you're going to make more sense of what I mean by how carbon is kind of the skeleton. You will be actually able to see that. But it's just right now, just take that for granted. When I say that carbon, carbon typically is the skeleton, like the backbone of all biomolecules. Okay. So, and, um, and hydrocarbons can vary in four different ways. So carbon skeletons can vary in length. So you can have, you can have two carbons bonded to each other, you can have three, you can have four, and on and on and on. I mean, yeah, four, sorry. So you can have on and on. So you can have more and more um, carbons. So they can vary by length. That's what it means by the first way they can vary in, in like the number of carbons attached to each other in um, one row. Carbon skeletons can also be branched or unbranched. So a branched carbon skeleton is um, something like this. A branched carbon skeleton will be something that instead of going in one line, what will happen is a carbon will bond here and then it'll keep going and then there can be another carbon bonded here. So you can think of it like a tree. You can have like the basic, like just like a tree has a um, the, the, the main um, trunk and then it has different uh, leaves stemming out. In the same sense, carbon skeletons can also be branched and unbranched. An unbranched would mean that you just have like the, just like a trunk. You just have one long row of carbon molecules, but it, um, that's, this, this would be unbranched. All these are unbranched carbon skeletons. But a branched one is where you have a, um, like a tr just like a tree with a trunk, you have, you have the one straight line and then you have other carbon molecules, um, carbon atoms, sorry, attaching to that and kind of creating branches like this. So this is what, these are, this, this would be considered a branched um, carbon skeleton. Okay, so those are the first two um, ways carbon skeletons can vary. The third way carbon, carbon skeleton can vary is carbon skeletons can have double bonds. See, all, everything <clears throat> that I drew here have single bonds, but carbon, again, can also double bond. So you can have a carbon skeleton that looks like this. So we have a double bond here instead of a single bond, and that's going to change the way the molecule itself, the molecule's properties itself. Or you could have this too. Okay, there's, so you, instead of having single bonds here, they can vary and you can start adding double bonds. So carbon skeletons can vary in that sense. And this is the most interesting thing that I've seen that I think is um, pretty cool, is that carbon can also form rings. And typically whenever carbon forms rings, there's six carbons. So what will happen is that carbon can either do this. So they kind of form a ring here. You can think of it like a hexagon shape, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And at every point right here, you have a carbon atom. So it's just like that's a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. And carbon can also do this. Let me erase this. You can also do this. You can have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then instead of having just single bonds, you can also start to double. It can be a double bond here and a single bond, and then a double bond here, and then a single bond, and a double bond here, and then a single bond. So carbon can also form rings like this. So again, just to recap, carbon, carbon skeletons can vary in the length. They can be branched and unbranched, um, kind of like a tree. It can, it, can, it can be just a trunk, or you can have like stems coming out. So carbon skeletons can be unbranched and branched. Carbon skeletons can also have just, instead of just single bonds, they can be double bonds. And the last way they can vary is that carbon can also form rings. So now that you have a basic understanding of this, um, it, it's going to make more sense as we expand on this. Because uh, in next week, in in our, uh, in our next videos, we're going to be looking at these carbon skeletons and start to build upon that. But for now, for just this video, know, understand that the four ways 
carbon um, skeletons can um, be formed. Again, that's length, branching, um, double bonds, and rings. And know what a hydrocarbon is. A hydrocarbon is just a any molecule that contains just carbon and hydrogen. And again, um, as we keep expanding on biomolecules, these hydrogen atoms are going to be replaced with more um, with different atoms and other co um, complex uh, atoms. And that's when we're going to see more interesting things in biomolecules. But that's all you have to know for now. Hydrocarbons are um, as simple as that.